I should be writing number 443. Well, I should be writing. I should be working on my Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And today I want to talk about something that uh, is often invisible to writers, and it's, it's a fascinating thing. You will start to come up with patterns in your own writing that you don't see. Other people will see, but you don't see. The funny thing is, I don't know where I'm going with this, because... I can't tell you how to see it. Other people have to point it out to you. Well, not all the time. We were talking about this um, in the Discord, and somebody had mentioned how they realized all of their stories started the same way. When I turned in my second book, my editor wrote me and said, do you realize that you have your protagonist either asleep or knocked out for about 40% of the book? And I was baffled. I hadn't even realized it. Yeah, she, she'd been knocked out. She'd had some astral projection stuff. She wasn't, like, completely out of it, but she was knocked out or sleeping and just kind of passive for a good part of the book, and I had not seen that at all. Sometimes it's a comforting thing, especially among some genre writers where you know that you're going to get a certain kind of romance told or a certain kind of murder mystery told. But other times, it's a weakness. If you're always going to have a certain violent action to be done, or you're always going to have somebody say the same catchphrase. Or, for example, I was reading um, The Long Walk by Stephen King uh, under his pseudonym Richard Bachman, and this is one of my favorite pieces of his, but it noticeably has a lot of problems. Stephen King had a weird view of women early on in his career, where he felt the need to mention the breasts of every single woman he described. Maybe not even in a sexual way. Maybe sometimes he was they were non-existent or he was disgusted by them, but they always had to be mentioned. Every woman in this story has her breasts mentioned. And the thing is, it's an engrossing and brilliant story, but you kind of wished an editor would have said, really? Really, Stephen? I mean, maybe when the guy is fantasizing about his girlfriend, maybe talk about hers. But every single woman said it time and time again that you need to step back from your work and take a break from it and then go back to it. And only then can you start to see what's what you were too close to see. You know, like you can't the whole you can't see the forest for the trees or a fish doesn't know what water feels like because there is nothing to compare it to that kind of thing. It's if you're if it's surrounding you and you can't see the boundaries then you're not going to see the problems. So when you approach editing your work, there are a lot of things you need to keep track of, but one of them is, are there repetitions? And I don't just mean repetitions of words, which admittedly I'm very bad at. But I mean also, do you have concepts that are repeated? Do you have a character that you know you've used in another book? I have a weird theory about The Good Place. If you have not watched The Good Place yet, you might want to go forward a little bit because this will have spoilers. Not too many, but at least for the first season. I'm the kind of person that, that watches my favorite stuff in the background while I'm doing stuff around the house because I don't have to concentrate on it too hard and I'm not going to miss anything and I enjoy listening to it. So one thing I've noticed about The Good Place is... There are a lot of repeated words and phrases through by different people. It starts out with Eleanor calls everybody Bud, but then you realize Michael does it. And then when you go into one of Chidi's flashbacks, one of his friends calls him Bud. Okay, so that's just one thing. When Eleanor thinks she's in love with Chidi, and she confesses her love to him. She calls him Silly Billy and then says, oh, love has made me a nerd. And then the next season, Janet calls Michael Silly Billy, which is such a weird 
term of endearment that it sticks out. When Chidi kisses Eleanor for the first time, she says, hot diggity dog. And then when Michael finds out that this has happened, he says, hot diggity dog. And I keep wondering, after the end of the first season, when you're told that that this is just a big fabrication and they're all in the bad place instead of the good place, you know, you've got to question everything. And they're still throwing this concept at us that we have to question everything because they keep turning the tables on us, as referenced in last week's episode which I'm not going to spoil anything in season four, just saying there was another twist. My daughter saw it coming all the way, by the way. I was very proud of her. But I can't fully articulate what my theory is, but there's got to be something. The, the show's too tightly plotted to be clumsily written with that dialogue. So what does it mean that so many people use the same phrases? Is it just the writer's? not realizing that they're repeating themselves? Or is there something else about, you know, all of this happening in Eleanor's mind or all of it being a test for Michael or there, there are a lot of these theories going around, but the repetition is what caught me. Why are these characters saying the same things? Why is a guy in Chidi's flashback using terms that Eleanor uses? So that's my thinking for today. I've done the stupid thing again and not eating lunch, and it's almost three o'clock, so I'm really kind of ravenous. want to go do that. Sorry I didn't get an episode done yesterday. The uh, trials of real life and domestic life hit me, and I had many, many things to do that were not at the computer, but I got up at seven o'clock in the morning, and I wrote 1,500 words today, so I'm proud of myself for that. If I can just keep, keep that up, I'll be in good shape for NaNoWriMo, which starts in a week and a day. It's a week till October 31st, Halloween, and then NaNoWriMo starts next Friday. Um, again, if you have missed, if you've lost your friend list on NaNoWriMo.org, I'm Mighty Mer on NaNoWriMo. Uh, there are lots of I Should Be Writing people on there. And if you want to support the Patreon, that's patreon.com slash Mighty Mer. And if you want to support at the $5 or up level, then you get access to the Discord. We're all going to be talking a lot next month. But you know, the podcast is always free. So that's merverse.com. And you want to email me any ideas for shows. Since I try to do this week daily, I don't always succeed. But I am doing many more episodes per week than I have been in a long time. Um, if you, I, I'm always taking... Uh, questions and ideas and stuff. Always welcoming them. So that's mightymer at gmail.com. And I think that's all that I need to talk about today because I need to save some stuff for tomorrow. But get to work. NaNoWriMo's coming. And even if not, if you're listening to the show, then you should be writing. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing the theme music so provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. The fact that's on to, is on to